And we are recording. Okay, well, hello everybody. Uh, we decided to have to record this show via Zoom uh, until we figure out the technical difficulties of live streaming. And so we still wanted you to be able to have a show. And so with me, I have the amazing Erin Larson from Erin Larson Yoga. And she is going to take us through a whole bunch of awesome things about sprouting, uh, starting your own little herb garden and veggie garden at home with the kids and a lot more fun. So uh, that's why we wanted to bring Erin on here to help us out with our Kids Fit Kitchen. So Erin, if you wanna go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and all your awesomeness, that would be great. Sure. Hello out there in virtual land. My name is Erin Larson, as Sarah said, and we actually met last year at the Tired Yoga Festival. I lived in Tired for four years and we kind of became instant, instant friends um, and started chatting and realized we had a lot in common, including yoga and nutrition. So I have a degree in nutrition from Virginia Tech, and then I'm also a certified holistic health counselor. And one of the things that I'm most passionate about is getting people excited to cook at home. And especially for families, they have found that the best therapy is, the, is having dinner with uh, your kids, actually. It's the best thing you can do for your kids, really, um, and having that contact. And then I also feel like getting the kids involved. As I actually grew up, my mom, wouldn't let me in the kitchen. She was very controlling. And when I got to college, I gained a lot of weight. One of the reasons was I didn't really know how to cook well. Um, you know, you've got the cafeteria food. My sophomore year was actually worse because I didn't have the meal plan. And then I was really eating a ton on the go. And then my junior year of college, I started to cook a lot. And I definitely made a lot of things that were a bomb. And so I like to tell people that, like, you're going to mess stuff up. You're going to make soups and actually add, you know, brewer's yeast instead of nutritional yeast. And you just can't come back from that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're you know if you're gonna buy fruits and veggies and some are gonna go bad like you're just gonna have mess ups and that's okay mm -hmm. um, but getting in the kitchen and experimenting um, and making stuff that's really easy to start with you know maybe you're starting to cook with the kids maybe you're just starting to cook by yourself mm -hmm. um, so that's that's something I always encourage people so yeah I love cooking and I love sharing um, easy tips for folks in the kitchen and in home and how to eat well. Yes. Awesome. And that's like, that's one thing that, you know, I really focus on and love as well is like to really show people that it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to be a chef, you know, or a really good cook. And, and instead of fighting with the kids every night to eat dinner, have them be part of the process and then they will eat it guaranteed, even if it's all veggies and it's stuff they've never had before. If they're part of the process and you guys are doing this together, they will 1000% eat it because of that journey. And like, that's why we love to create together in Kids Fit Kitchen as a bonding experience. And like Erin's saying, if it, if it doesn't turn out, that's fine. <laughs> you know, you just need to learn, you know, like, like I'm not a chef, but I just enjoy, um, like their chit tradition of like cooking together and like making yeah. it uh like a family thing or even like a friend you know thing a spouse thing whatever it is that you guys have but just doing this together is always uh really fun and makes it just simple and fun and so it doesn't have to be that difficult and it makes a big difference in your health yeah and uh parents out there when you start to get your kids oriented to the kitchen and you start to trust them with things like knives uh, mm -hmm. i have a good friend who's the director of a montessori school and part of their training is teaching kids you know throughout the years how to handle knives yep. um then you know you could get to the point where you come home from work and your teenager has already prepared a meal for you so if that isn't an impetus to get your kids you know into the kitchen i don't know what is exactly i know and even like the younger kids i mean even younger than teenager i taught um waldorf and montessori preschool and it was soup fridays and that was the, exactly what we did we taught them how to use a knife on their own using a fork and you just chop until you get to the fork and so it's like these kids have this like amazing sense of uh just like self-confidence when they get to use a real knife you know especially uh at an age where most people would freak out about giving your kid a knife but we show you exactly how to use uh the knife and the fork in a safe way to um to have the kids help and then yeah maybe your 10 year old you'll come home and they'll have lunch ready <laughs> so so yeah good point um okay so 
so yeah, tell us a little bit about sprouting because I was telling you that I have this fun jar that my mom gave me, but I have yet to use it because uh, yes. I'm a little scared and I'm not really sure what's supposed to happen and okay. they get slimy. And so tell us about sprouting. <laughs> So we're actually going to, since this is all about, you know, being in your home and we all are in our homes right now, it's perfect. I'm going to take you on a little journey through my home. And so you can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm not just telling you what you should be doing and not in putting into practice myself. So perfect. we're in my living room right now. Um, you can see my, I love orchids. They're all behind me right there. Oh, that's I have so awesome. an orchid fetish. Those are all actually reblooms as well. I love to buy the ones that are dying and dead at the store. Um, so I do have a plant love. So we're going into my kitchen and uh, I guess I'll just excuse you now. That's not totally clean. So I know the sun's there, but this is my sink and these are the windows in front of my sink. Oh, I see the, the back lights a little rough. So there's my jar. I'm going to show you a few things. I have, I always like to have fresh flowers in the house. It's just one thing, but these are, um, I'm going to turn it to the light. This is actually green onions. Oh, yeah. And you can see, I just have a little water in the bottom of the jar. There's like maybe a half inch. And so the roots are exposed. And I actually cut all of these off last night because I made um, shrimp and grits for my honey's birthday. And here's the leftover green onions. But I actually cut all of these off level last night and I don't know if you can see but these have grown within 12 hours that much oh my this gosh will pop right here I never that's thought about new. saving the green onions that's all new so green onions when you oh. buy them for the store I bought these last month and I have continued to use them and use them and use them so there's, there's actually quite a few vegetables. If you look up, you know, how you can grow vegetables at home, there's stuff like that. So green onions, that way I actually always have something green on my window. So it's just aesthetically pleasing. Oh my gosh, I had no idea, never would have thought of that, but it makes sense. I wanna do that. So this is my sprouting jar. I've had this probably for a decade. And if you look close, you're going to see quite a few little seeds in there that are actually haven't sprouted quite yet. Mm -hmm. There's three different types of seeds in here. There's, I think, mung, broccoli, and I think there's some other uh, lentil. Oh, nice. Lentils in there. And so there's different sizes. And so you can easily buy, um, and I've actually uh, did a talk. I think last week on just general nutrition and talked about greens in your home and you can buy the seeds and you put in the just I mean the instructions are here so I'm not gonna you know reinvent the wheel place two tablespoons of sprouting seeds in a sprouting jar with three times as much water as the seeds so really you just cover your seeds and you soak overnight then you dump that water out Okay. For many seeds, five hours of soaking is sufficient. So for smaller seeds, then you dump the water out. And then every morning, it has a little picture. <laughs> yep. Every morning I come down and I have my routine, which includes drinking a big glass of water first. Then I make my coffee and then I fill up my jar with water all the way. So all the seeds get a nice bath. At least something in my house is getting a daily bath. And then, <laughs> and then you drain all the water. There's a mesh screen. Some have maybe plastic. This is a stainless steel screen. They dump all the water out. And then I put it in, you want to put it in a sunny location. So I put it here on my windowsill. And I just have a towel down. Oh, okay. To prevent it from rolling off. Now my windowsill is big enough and you want to put it flat. You don't want to turn it upright. Put it flat so it's got all that surface area. And then in, I think this is uh, four days, but if you look close, you can see those little green sprouts there. Yeah, you can see all the sprouts. And okay. then mm -hmm. if you've ever gone to the grocery store and seen sprouts, you'll see that, you know, they get, they get pretty thick before. I, I could take those out and for sure sprinkle some of my salad and just eat the seeds and eat the really new sprouts for sure. Um, but the longer you wait, the bigger they're going to get. Mm -hmm. Usually by the time they're actually all sprouted, it's quite a bit. So you may want to start eating them in a little bit. Um, but as long as you're rinsing them daily, and maybe even morning and night, 
um, they're not going to get slimy. Okay. And then you want to make sure that when you're storing them, then you're storing them in a clamshell that has holes in it. Like, you know, you'll buy berries. Yeah, the, they'll be in a clamshell with holes. Because if you put them in a Tupperware container that's uh, airtight, they will get slimy. They need yeah. to breathe. Just like a plant. If I, if I took any plant and I put it inside a jar, and screw, it would die. It needs mm -hmm. oxygen because it's a living food. Right. Okay. And then, so the jar is laying just flat. It doesn't, yeah. have to, I always thought it had to be at like an angle. No, no. Nope. You want to drain all the water out. And of course there'll be a little bit of moisture in there, which is, yeah. Really and okay. then you just want to put it in a sunny location. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I need to yeah. For my, for my jar. Looking for a sunny location. I know. And then, uh, and then I'll definitely post a photo, um, of the progress. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and so that's why, you know, sprouts are so, so important for us to get into our daily lifestyle, because I don't like to use the word diet, but um, is because they are a living food. And so they're super nutrient dense, have tons of, uh, you know, all the phytonutrients and the vitamins and the minerals. And so sprouts are a really, really important food to uh, incorporate into the diet for sure. Yes. Yes. Are we going to the garden? We're gonna go all back. I, um, fun fact, I used to live in a yurt for six years and I have a bunch of raised beds there. I'm gonna talk about raised bed gardening here shortly. Okay. Um, and at my uh, house currently, I've been here for two years, I bought it from someone that was also into um, eating off the land. So I do have some gardens, but I don't have any particularly raised beds. But what I do have out here is I have my seed starts. And so, I'm gonna set you down here. All right. Okay. Water <laughs> so this is my tray, and I would say definitely that um, your your plants are essential because they're food. And so I got this a few weeks ago from Lowe's. I bet Walmart, your, your local garden or nursery center has one too. And they were just compacted peat moss. And then you add water and they grow, which is super fun to watch. They're almost like those sponges that turn into like dinosaurs or whatever with little Yeah. <laughs> and it's in this little mesh sack. And so then you get these little um, peat moss pods and then you plant your seeds. And so if I turn this around, you'll see I have these little markers. Um, some come with a few. I've also used popsicle sticks in the past. And then you plant your seeds in these pods and you want to make sure you water them daily and then they grow. So what I have growing here, here is broccoli sprouts. These broccolis Cute. are coming up. So I've got a lot of greens. Um, then this is my biggest tomato and this is a crim tomato. I've got three different types of tomatoes. I've got sweeties, crim, and bush big boy. Wow. Then I have an Anaheim chili pepper. I have a wonder pepper, which is just like your California bell pepper. Okay. And then I have jalapeno. Now jalapenos have what you would call a longer germination time. And that just means how long it takes for that seed to come up out of the earth. And so those have not sprouted yet. But this is a California wonder pepper that's just starting to come up. Oh. <laughs> they all kind of come up at different times. Yeah. And it's so fun after you plant them to watch them. You know, you kind of check on them every day. Yeah. And, um, you know, especially with your greens, those start coming up like your lettuces. Those start coming up in just like three to four days. Um, and then in some bigger pots out here, this is basil. Basil is really one of the easiest herbs to grow. Mm. And I actually, I didn't think properly, but I trimmed my basil back a little bit ago for lunch. I had tomatoes and basil, which was one of my favorite things to eat. I pretty much live off tomato and basil in the summertime. I bet. So yeah. Here you're going to see my bigger plants. And I have tomatoes back here growing. I bought those actually as smaller guys from Lowe's a few weeks ago because I love tomatoes and basil. So I want to get a head start on that. And I bought yeah. the basil plants as well. And um, there's a way to pick basil that when you pick the tops off, um, it'll actually send out new sprouts and it'll help the basil to grow. And those are kind of maybe gardening, gardening, you know, like 102. Yeah. Uh, gardening 101 today is <laughs> get some seeds in the soil. 
And if you're like, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go to the grocery you know, uh, Lowe's and get that stuff. Most of you have some soil in your yard. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you just dig, dig some dirt up and put it in a container and put some seeds in there and watch and see if it comes up. Um, because plants are pretty resilient and if you water it and you give it, you know, you, they want to be a little warmer when they're starting out. It's outside right now. You're kind of breaking up. Might need to go back inside a little bit more. I want to keep them in sub-zero temperatures, period, because they'll die. And then the other thing I have going on out here is, um, can you see that? Yeah. That's just a tarp with this old hoop house that was in my backyard. So you can kind of ignore that. But what I did is put a tarp down in part of my yard. I hate mowing the lawn anyways. And I put some rocks on top of it and I'm just trying to kill a patch of grass. And then I'm gonna turn that up and I'm gonna have a new patch of grass in the backyard where I'm gonna have a garden and I'll have what I would call my kitchen garden back there, which will have herbs and lettuces, stuff okay. that I really like to eat daily. And then I can just walk out my backyard and I can grab those things. Yeah, so. absolutely. So yeah. Um, those little seed pods and the little sprouts that, you know, um, that we just saw coming up with the different things, tomato and basil and stuff like that. Um, so most of the people that I work with are in Colorado. And as you know, Colorado is not usually the friendliest uh, environment to grow <laughs> stuff like this. So, you know, can we, how can we kind of do all of this inside until it's easy enough to bring it outside or like, what are some tips and tricks? like? So just like I showed you with those sprouts, those sprouts are inside and they're doing really well because they're in a warm spot and there's yeah. sun. Those seeds as well, if you have a sunny window, you, they're going to sprout inside. I'm moving them outside because, you know, we're having like 40 to 50 degree days. And once they got big enough, I take them outside and it makes them a little hardier. Mm -hmm. But you can start that stuff in a windowsill. And in fact, that little seed pod starter kit has this plastic tray lid that goes on top and it creates like an in-home greenhouse. Okay. So I'll put yeah, that on. So it's definitely easy enough to do that in home. And then of course, when Colorado gets to the point where you guys are able to, um, you know, plant stuff outside, you can. But the other thing you can do is called container gardening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you to my front porch here shortly. Okay. Um, yeah. And while I don't have plants in there yet, we had a, a hard, what you would call a hard freeze the other day. We'll actually kill stuff if you leave stuff out. It was 28 degrees. Um, so, you know, 32 degrees will start really killing stuff. So I haven't put too much stuff in the ground outside. I actually haven't put anything in the ground outside yet, except the things that I naturally have growing outside, like asparagus and strawberries, which are, which are blossoming and my blueberries. But um, what I have are just pots of soil that I've prepared on my front porch. Okay. And so let's say you're like, I live in an apartment mm -hmm. and I don't have, I don't actually have any soil. I, I have no soil. What you most likely do have is a container, a bucket, um, a yogurt container, an old like salad this? bin. Container. Yeah, does this work? Yeah, that totally works. Okay. And what it needs though is it needs holes because you're going to water your plant and you need then the extra water to drain out. And you could just take, you know, scissors or a pen or pencil and, and poke some holes in there. You know, obviously if, if you're a child, maybe, <laughs> yeah, supervision of a parent. But um, since I'm an avid gardener, I had some old pots. I'm going to take you out front. Let's hope that the internet works. So and I'm just going to show you. Do this plant. without any soil? Just water no, it? In the soil. The sprouts are a little different. Those sprouts eventually would not turn into whole plants. They yeah. just wouldn't have a sprout. But um, taking you to my front porch. So let's just say you had a front porch and that was it. You don't have any. So I just have pots on my front porch. Can you see those? Yep. That eventually I will put, you know, some tomatoes in. I'll transplant my tomatoes to a bigger pot when they get too big or the basil. Mm -hmm. And I'll have some basil in pots on my front porch. Yeah. Maybe some cilantro. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can easily, I've heard of people doing just tomatoes at home in a five gallon bucket. Tomatoes get pretty big. They need a bigger container. 
for sure. But herbs, so, uh, I mean, the smaller the plant, the smaller the container. So a lot of herbs will do just fine in a pot like that. And you know, a lot of stores, even grocery stores will have living herbs. Yeah. And you can just yeah. repot them. Um, but you know, like Lowe's or your local gardening store and herbs, are a really great way to have fresh greens around all the time. Mm -hmm. Rosemary and thyme and oregano, those are your hardier herbs. In fact, mine all come back next year. Now we don't have as cold of winters here in West Virginia as you do in Colorado. Mm -hmm. But then your more tender herbs like parsley, cilantro, and basil, you, and you have to replant those um, every year. Okay. They, are, they don't come back. But my chive plant has never died. Wow. Never died. It comes back every year. And the one down at the yurt where I have raised beds are like, I mean, it's like this big. It's huge. And so the other last thing I wanted to share um, is a great book reference. And it's called Square Foot Gardening. And this is by Mel Bartholomew. It was the first book I got on gardening. And it teaches you how to grow a very productive garden in a four by four square plot. Oh, cool. And in fact, there's a, there's a chapter in there, chapter 17 called special gardens. And one of the special gardens is a children's garden. Aww. And so, you know, kids love stuff that grows quickly. Like I was talking about green yeah. lettuces grow super quickly. And so, you know, so you could exciting. plant lettuces with your, your, um, your child they come up really quickly and then you can they can go out and pick them radishes grow really quickly um things like um you can also in that um three by three square you could build something that allows a trellis when you gotta have kids oh. watch cucumbers you know climb mm -hmm. a trellis i put them up the trellis on my porch last year from the ground so there's just a lot of cool. stuff you know it's it seems quite daunting to start to grow your own food but really like plants are going to come up stick the seeds in the ground you're yeah. gonna you know i have plants die i forget to pull them in and it got cold and i mean it's okay right you just do your best and you're going to have a couple plants survive you're going to get some fresh vegetables and for kids i mean even for adults there's just no greater joy year after year mm -hmm. of going outside and picking my own cucumbers and tomatoes i've grown watermelon i've grown squashes peas yeah. you know beans yeah, absolutely and especially for the kids like we were saying you know it's like when they're a part of this process you know they'll eat these things so imagine if you start like one of those little pods with radishes like what kid is going to eat a radish if you hand it to them, right? But if they have watched it go from like little seeds and then sprouting and then turning into a radish, the appreciation and the joy of that is, is they're going to eat it for sure. Yeah. It's so, it's so fun. Yeah. It's, it's so fun. And you were talking about, you know, the, the Montessori schools, our local Montessori school has a garden and the kids get dirty and they get in there. Yeah. 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 My niece and nephew started a little seed um, garden a while back. And they were so excited. Like every time I would come over, they would run me back to the little window and they would show me. And it was just a little tray like you had with different yeah. little seeds and some made it and some don't. And yeah. they were so excited though, every day to check on their cute little seeds. And then they would eat bigger it. Day. I mean, even the sprouting yeah. jar is still fun for me to look at, you know, 10 yeah, years. Yeah, I'm excited to start <laughs> I'm like super excited. Like I said, you remotivated me for sure. And I'm like, okay, where can I put, like, where can I start a cute little garden? Yeah, on I don't have kids. I, I don't document the size of my I kids over the years, but I like to watch my plants grow. So. Yeah, I know. Like I was going to say, even if, even the grownups would appreciate radishes more if they grew it themselves, you know? Oh, for sure. And I, I would maybe even eat a salad if I grew my own lettuce. <laughs> So, you know, there's that. Um, yeah. Awesome. And do you have any other like last minute tips or anything like that on getting people started? I know you said too, like if people don't want to go to the store, you, you can order seeds and stuff online. Oh yeah, and you can order some seeds people online. Give you free. I, I actually think there's some companies out there that are sending seeds for free. I want to see seeds of change was. You'd have to just, you know, put in your Google search free seeds. Um, okay. And see what comes up. But I think there were places that were, 
mailing out free seeds. But, you know, if you want to start some stuff at home, like I talked about, you know, you, almost everyone has some sort of, unfortunately, plastic, you know, one-time mm -hmm. use container. Um, yeah. I know, sadly, uh, a lot of recycling has been shut down at this time. So, oh. you know, stuff that you usually would recycle yeah. and, you know, you're throwing away or I have a big box in my garage, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, is yeah. go through and like screw some holes in your yogurt, you know, smaller yogurt containers to bigger yogurt containers to like you had your salad bins, those yeah. salad bins, you know, maybe a pretzel container that you bought pretzels in. Yeah, Anything? like I have a big uh, Costco size of the cashews and it, they're almost gone. And I was like, oh, that one would be perfect too. And, and then, so yeah, then we're using, you know, a single use plastic over and over again, which always makes me really happy yeah. too. Um, I, uh, I actually just saw a friend on Facebook. She used um, the cardboard egg crates. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And they put a little, um, you can get seed starter mix. It's predominantly peat moss, which is this really light, airy, let's okay. the soil breathe like a heavier you know if you were to dig up soil in your yard that would work but notice like if you dig up your soil it's really thick like clay yeah clay doesn't it's not going to let a lot of oxygen in or water seep through but something that's what called loamy um is going to allow going to allow soil but you just want to you know you, you just have your little container with your egg you do those and you could draw a little seed map or write it yeah. down somewhere so you know which are coming up and I gosh you can make it like a race for the kids you know you can be like yeah. which one do you think will come up and be like you know radish is in the lead or yeah <laughs> pepper um the radish a radish is going to give you a um of a food that's under the soil it's called a root crop those you want to plant in the ground oh, but okay. that gives you something that's above ground like lettuces or basil or tomatoes or peppers they're ones you're going to want to start um you can start inside but certain foods just are not going to do well inside which are going to be your your carrots and your beets and your yeah radish. that makes sense Okay. Stuff that grows under the soil, that the food that you're eating is under the soil, you're going to want to make sure you plant that outside. You won't have much luck planting um, radishes in, in a small container and then thinking you'll be able to. Yeah. And definitely make sure you guys too, like I know she's mentioned this before, but um, it's an easy thing to possibly uh, mistake different soil types. And so make sure that if you are going to buy uh, soil from the store that it is for eating and it's for, you know, specifically for herbs and stuff like that. And it's natural and it doesn't have uh, like the chemicals, like a lot of potting soil has and, you know, like miracle Grow and stuff like that, that could be in it for potted plants. Just really make sure that it's for edible and for eating uses. And it usually will say like herb soil or vegetable garden soil. And so just be really conscious of that as you are looking for different soils. If you're buying that, that you're not getting the kind that's for potted plants because it yeah. has chemicals in it. So yeah. FYI. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Well, this has been so great. I'm really excited to start my own and, um, and I'll actually take some pictures and, and show you guys along the way. I need to go find some seeds. I mean, the closest lows to me is like an hour away though. So, uh, we'll see when I actually get to find some soil or <laughs> find some seeds, but, uh, I'm definitely going to start the sprouting jar right away and start incorporating more of this into, um, into my diet and then yeah, saving those clam things for future use too. And then the green onions, I'm so excited to go buy green onions and start my own jar and keep yeah. them going. I don't, they're, I've never refrigerated them. I just have them on the counter. I had no idea that you could even do that, but it makes sense, duh, because there's roots right there growing right out of the bottom of it, totally exposed that you could keep yeah. growing those in, in water. So that's amazing. Um, I use green onion like on everything. I love it so much. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a really cool uh, trick. <laughs> so thank you for showing me that. I'm going to tell my parents today when I go see them and, and we make dinner, I'm going to show them the trick. Great. Uh, they love keeping that kind of stuff too. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Thank you again so much for, for showing us all your fun stuff and getting us motivated to start our own little gardens and, um, and to appreciate making our own food and, and appreciating the process of, of food instead of like, you know, seeing the tomato and being like, ew, gross. And then you waste it. Like when you know the journey it's gone through and like how long it takes and, and just like all the different stages, I think yeah. really helps people appreciate food a lot more and reduces a lot of uh, food waste as well. And then, like we said, I mean, if the kids are part of this process and they're watching it grow, 
they will absolutely be like, can I have tomato salad for lunch? <laughs> you know, so um, definitely let us know. Um, you what? Well, they'll just go outside and eat from the garden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just go out there and pick it themselves. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you again very much. And you guys also, Lauren, um, Aaron does lots of really good, um, I'm like combining your name, Aaron Larson Yoga. Uh, she does online yoga classes as well right now and streaming and, um, and recorded classes. So if you feel like you need some yoga in your life as well, definitely go to her page, um, Aaron Larson Yoga and uh, sign up for some classes. And then you can also so just go to Aaron Larson um, yoga.com. So it's E R I N L A R S E N yoga.com. And I would love if you guys start doing these and plant seeds at home and start growing stuff, post it to mm -hmm. Sarah's page. And I would love to see what you're going to. You can post to my page everything. Um, it's Aaron Larson yoga and wellness. I also do holistic health coaching, which is the other side of that. But I, yoga is all about taking care of your inside body through yeah. diet as well. Um, but uh, I would love to love to see what you guys are doing out there. Over the yeah. Summer. So definitely tag us. You guys like definitely post um, photos either in this thread or just on your regular Facebook thread and tag me, Sarah, no H broom with an E and then Aaron Larson, uh, Larson, I see Aaron with an E with an E. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we would love to see your projects. I would love to see the kids like with their seeds and, and watching the whole process. So, so definitely, um, let us know how you guys are doing and we would love to see the progress. Yeah. And Aaron, thank you again very much for being here. Sorry again for the technical difficulties of not being able to do this live and being able to engage with you guys one-on-one -on -one with questions, but just type your questions in the comments and we'll get back to you. Um, at some point anyways. So uh, we'll figure out the live thing and hopefully have you on here again to show us all the fun stuff. And yeah, send pictures of, of your progress too so that we could see how we've seen it. Okay. All right, well, thanks again, everybody. We'll see you soon and, uh, and yeah, thank you again, Erin. You're welcome.